Hi everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video I am going to be checking out this um, set of watercolours from a company called Mungyo. Um, so Mungyo are a Korean company, um, I believe they started back in the 1940s. Um, but yeah, back in around 2015 they brought out these watercolour pan sets. So um, they are um, listed as professional paints on the box there. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so they come in this nice kind of watercolour um, set in this nice tin, which is absolutely identical to the one I got with my St. Petersburg White Knight paints as well. Um, it even feels flimsy in the exact same places too. So yeah, I think it's pretty much a universal cheapish tin, which is fine, does the job. Um, I prefer the tin ones to plastic ones. Um, I don't really know why actually, I just feel like they're a bit more sturdy. So I'm unwrapping the paints here. They do have a bit of a weird texture on the top, which I wasn't so sure about. Um, it looked a bit strange. Um, so yeah, they've got the kind of paper wrapper on them that you see um, most kind of watercolours uh, wrapped in that gives you the information about the colour. Um, as well as the pigment codes and transparency and light fastness and all that kind of caboodle. Um, so yeah, they kind of sit quite nicely in this little tin. They look quite nice. Um, it's got a range of 12 colours here. So white, yellow ochre, yellow, orange, permanent red, light red, yellow green, viridian, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, permanent violet and black. Um, I do kind of, um, oh, and this middle bit comes out here, so you've got like extra mixing wells underneath the uh, underneath the uh, paints there if you so wish, um, or you can take that tray out completely, which is what I did with my St. Petersburg White Knights ones to fit in um, as many full pans as I can. So I've got 14 full pans in um, if you take that bracket out, and I just kind of attach the pans so they don't move around too much with a bit of blue tack on the bottom but now they're quite firmly wedged in there especially where I've been painting and paint's gone down the side and it's all just a bit stuck in now it looks super messy but I quite like it um so I've never done this before with a watercolor set because I guess I've never had this formation before but I've got this space in the middle and I've seen other artists do this um I think like James Gurney and like various other people um, where they just kind of have a bit of a colour reference um, chart in the middle there. So I thought I would make one. This isn't very neat, it's not very straight, it's not very precise because I couldn't be bothered, but I just did it by eye, um, as you saw there. Um, and as long as it kind of fits in there okay without falling out too easily, then that's fine by me. Um, I don't actually know how long it will really last, to be honest, because then I realised once it was in there, that, okay, you know, if you miss the paints, obviously it gets this piece of paper wet, but I don't know, maybe it'll be okay, who knows. But for now, I think it's actually quite a nice touch just to have um, a little chart in the middle just to show you what the colours are, especially with the blues, I find. I forget which one is which quite a lot, um, so having this chart in the middle could be quite helpful. And then when you get to darker, the darker colours, you know, they're kind of sometimes can be quite difficult to tell what they are. Um, I definitely had that on my with my White Knights watercolours for a while. I just um, keep, keep forgetting which one's the green, which one's the purple, etc. because they're just so dark. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, I've just missed it and I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to get this piece of paper wet, but never mind. Um, so this is something I've never done before as well, but I see lots of other watercolour people who are super into their kind of pigment codes and testing transparency and all that stuff. Um, I've never really been, never really done that kind of thing, but, um, you know, I think it is good to really kind of try to learn these things about watercolours and try and understand why um, knowing pigment codes is important and why, um, or how knowing like transparency affects your decisions and stuff like that. It's all about you know, gradual education. So I thought, you know, let's let's do this. Now I've got now I've got my blog and my YouTube channel and I am sort of uh, teaching people bits and bobs on how to sketch. I thought, you know, it's actually a bit more responsible of me to try and learn a few more bits and bobs myself. Um 
so I did that and I made a note of the pigments and stuff like that um, and then also I've come here to make my uh, watercolour mixing chart these always do take a while so just to warn you if you are going to do this it just be in it for the long haul yeah it's going to take like a couple of hours to do this um, and if you want to know how to do this then I've got a whole video on how to make this kind of watercolour mixing chart which I've linked to in the corner there um, but it's nice you can see those kind of pastel shades that you get with using a white, I've never used white watercolour like this before, I've used like white gouache on top of things but that's kind of obviously a different different ball game really so um, I was a bit uh, confused as to why budget sets always include like a white and a black when it's like not something that watercolour watercolor artists should use um, but I guess the, these paints are kind of more directed at like or they would be better off with for crafters and stuff like that where they might use a white like on a tinted paper or something it comes out quite nice also to make these pastel shades which I actually do really think are very nice um, I might not use them in a watercolour painting but I think they're cool so this is it side by side but with my St Petersburg um, set and you can see the colours in the Mungo are just a bit more balanced, a bit more shade so I don't have much of a much in the way of yellows on that St Petersburg white knight set um, so the the colours you can produce kind of become quite heavy and quite dark um, as you can see on the chart these watercolour charts are just indispensable I use mine all the time to um, figure out which colours to mix together um, and I think just over time you know I'm beginning to just learn that and stuff so and it becomes a bit more instinctive so uh, if you do anything I highly recommend you make that watercolour mixing chart and as I said I've got an entire video on um, how to make one of those and I also if you prefer reading um, or taking it in a bit slower then I have got a blog post on that as well which I will put in the description below um, so yeah so I thought you know I've made those charts and stuff um, just to kind of test the colors out as you can probably see they were quite nice and vibrant um, so I thought I should do just a little quick little sketch with them um, so I just found a reference picture on Pinterest um, one that had like a nice range of colors in it um, but that was also like kind of simple so I could just do it quick um, and if you've watched any many of my videos you can see I, I don't really do sort of a traditional watercolor um, process I'm more kind of an ink and watercolor line and wash kind of person but I thought I'd try out a bit more of a traditional approach um, by doing the drawing in pencil and then going in and painting with the watercolor because obviously that's the main focus of this video um, so I quite liked how the sky came out actually I quite liked how the the colors blended together I think it was good that I had my book up at an angle I had it have it on the De La Rowney Art Sphere easel uh, if you want to see more about that I've got a video on that as well um, which does help me with my posture a bit my back because I, I get a bit of backache sometimes um, probably because the chair and the table aren't at the right height and whatnot but I don't really have uh, can't really do too much about that at the moment so that's fine but anyway um, the easel actually helped with uh, the colors kind of running down a bit and blending in um, which I thought was nice um, I'm not pretending that this is any kind of great work of art I know I've completely buggered up the uh, perspective on that little house in the front but you know it's just so you guys can see um, you know what you, what you can achieve or like how the colors look and all that kind of thing um, so you know as usual I got part way through this and I was like oh god this is rubbish um, persevered though and actually really was quite happy with the results it came out like pretty loose and sketchy um, I liked the watercolour splatters so I'm just using the white there on the lighthouse because I thought white not I've got it I'll just see what happens with it um, so you know uh, I don't know I think it would be I think it would be cool to use on tinted paper I might have to give that a go at some stage um, so yeah just uh, just did this this whole thing just with one brush um, again just so I wasn't fussing around too much with it um, just did it with a with a flat brush um, and then I couldn't really help myself so I went in at the end with my fountain pen and just did a few lines um, just because I probably have a bit of an addiction and just can't leave it alone so <laughs> I had to get some ink in there somewhere just, uh, just to make me feel a bit more comfortable um, 
so yeah, I mean, I was really, you know, was quite happy with this sketch. I was quite happy with how it came out. Quite liked the colours um, that I got. Um, enjoyed splashing a bit of the paint around, splattering it on. Um, you can obviously see a bit where I've been impatient on the horizon there and the purple's uh, leaked up into the sky a bit, but that's fine. That's no problem. Um, so yeah, just going in and darkening a few areas now. Um, just going to add a few more shadows because that always helps things look a bit better as we discuss um, and then just a few little purple splatters at the end and that's kind of a wrap so to be honest guys I really enjoyed using this set of colours it's quite nice having like a, a balance of colours which I don't have in the St Petersburg set but that's just you know my own um, kind of you know issue that I bought the colours that I did um, if you uh, have been enjoying this video and if you are super into urban sketching and travel sketching and ink and watercolour and stuff like that, please, please, please do go check out urbansketchingworld.com. I'm pretty confident you'll find loads and loads of stuff there that you'll um, enjoy reading and I'm linking to a few of my videos um, as well there. So um, definitely go and check it out. I think you'll really um, enjoy looking at that. Um, and then also, um, I do have a book available uh, to buy. It's an ebook and it's 60 pages. It's a PDF and it's over 130 of my ink and watercolour illustrations that I did um, on location over the last three years of my travels um, across 15 countries and four different continents. So um, please do check that out. The link is in the description below. Um, I have also just released a gift guide as well, which I think you'd be quite interested in if you've got friends who are into urban sketching um, and or if you're looking for gift inspiration for yourself um, or to tell uh, uh, to ask others to buy for you, then um, I think you'll enjoy uh, having a browse through that gift, gift, gift guide. Um, and it also features some really cool stuff from some more kind of independent makers, you know, so it's all, it's not all just a list of stuff you can get from Amazon, although it does have that as well. Um, but there's some really interesting companies producing some really beautiful um, and ingenious products um, that are out there. So um, those are just my kind of top, top finds from um, the world of uh, travel, art and urban sketching. So um, do go and check that out. Um, so yeah, so just to wrap up guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, my thoughts on the Mungio um, paints are that they are really great if you're just getting into um, urban sketching or watercolour painting. Um, this set of 12 is perfectly adequate. As you can see from the colour mixing chart, you can pretty much get most of what you need from that. However, if you do want more paint options, then you can just um, uh, look for the 24 set or the 48 set. But I would say for, you know, for urban sketching, really, you don't want to go too crazy. So the smaller it is, the better it is, the more likely you are to carry your stuff around with you. Um, so it's great for, the paints are great for sketchbook artists. Um, maybe you're on, uh, into art journaling or any kind of crafting. Um, also, if you're going to scan your artwork and just use it digitally um, to create prints or for like digital assets, then this, this set is perfect. That's absolutely fine. You know, it's no problems. Um, the paints are nice and vibrant. It's got a good rain, good transparency. Um, so yeah, really good to practice with. And I think they're, they're available in, on Amazon right now for like under $15, which is like really cheap. Um, so the cons are that they're definitely not professional paints. Um, not all of the paints here are light fast, therefore they will fade um, if they're exposed to daylight or um, light of any sort. I mean, not instantly, don't get me wrong, but like they're, they're, not, they're not something you'd want to use for a commission or for any kind of piece of art that's going to hang on the wall. You know, um, if you're selling your artwork as a professional, then you should not use these paints. You should be using top quality kind of archival paper and also um, paints that are light fast so guaranteed to pretty much last for a hundred years or maybe even more um, so you know if you are uh, looking to get professional paints then despite what Mungio print on the box um, they are not um, so yeah anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed this video 
and I will be back with you soon for another one.